Let's talk about things your agent wants you to know. You're a voice actor. You're an entrepreneur. You're a VOpreneur. Welcome to the Everyday VOpreneur Podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. Your voiceover demos are your number one marketing tool, and you need to display them on your website in a way that works on any device or browser. VoiceSam is the player producers love. Plus, it offers tools that can improve your email signature, quickly create a one-page website, and much more. Sign up now at voicesam.com slash markscott and get three months of the bass player for the price of one. That's voicesam.com slash markscott for full details and to sign up. The VOpreneur Podcast. Hey, it doesn't suck. Not as funny as Conan. Not as cute as Seth Meyers. Not as smart as Colbert. But he's one of us, and that counts for something. Here's Mark Scott, the original Everyday VOpreneur. Hello, and welcome to the Everyday VOpreneur podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. I'm Mark Scott, the original Everyday VOpreneur, here with another summer series episode of the podcast. What's the summer series? Quick hit episodes designed to get you in and out so you can be outdoors, enjoying everything that summer has to offer but still giving you some practical, actionable advice that you can use and apply to your voiceover business. Just before we dive into this week's episode, I do want to remind you that coming up on June the 29th, I'm going to be teaching a LinkedIn masterclass. It's called Making Money with LinkedIn. It has been one of my favorite social media platforms for a very long time now because I am always finding great clients on it, and I want to show you how to do the same. This two-hour masterclass is going to teach you everything that I know about using LinkedIn and everything that I am doing in my own voiceover business. And here's the best part. I'm going to teach you how to do it with a free LinkedIn profile. Masterclass is happening on June the 29th, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And that is going to happen live via Zoom, limited to 50 voice actors. But if you sign up, you are going to receive access to a recorded version of the training. So if you can't attend live, you still will get a copy. So you still won't miss anything. All the details to sign up are at markscottcoaching.com. That is markscottcoaching.com. Look for Making Money with LinkedIn Live. So I got something fun for you this week. This is a little bit different. I was having a conversation recently with an agent who was expressing some agent frustrations. And I encouraged the agent to give me a list of those common frustrations. And then I was going to flip them into a quick hit podcast episode. And so that is exactly what happened. So what I am about to share with you, this does not come from me. This is coming from an agent. And this is a list of things that this particular agent, and I think for the most part, it would be safe to say all agents want their talent to know about working with an agent. You know, there's a lot of people that are questioning how do I get an agent and there's a lot of advice and tips and tricks for how to get an agent but very seldom do we get to hear straight from an agent the things that they want their talent to know and the frustrations that their talent are sometimes causing so this again coming straight from an agent you might want to make some notes here just in case you're doing any of these things. And I'm just going to roll through this list. So first and foremost, tracking your emails when you send an audition to determine if that email gets opened and then following up with the agent to inquire about being submitted. So you're using your CRM. Say you're using Nimble, right? Nimble gives you the ability to track emails. So what this agent is saying is, If you are adding a tracking pixel to your email and making a note of when your emails are or aren't getting opened and then following up to confirm whether you are or aren't getting submitted, that's a really good way to end up in the agent's bad books. You send your audition, you let it go. At that point, honestly, that is your responsibility. It's their responsibility to pick the auditions that fit the casting, forward them on. Your obligation is to just submit. So that's number one on the list. Number two, submitting for something that you are totally not a fit for, mainly speaking, age-wise. So if you're a 50-year-old man, rarely does a 50-year-old man sound 30 years or younger, despite what their wives may say. 
This was in brackets from the agent. Adding to that, ethnicity. Submit for the appropriate ethnicities. Just because you think you can sound like an ethnicity doesn't mean that you should. So this comes back to 101, which is follow the directions. This is not rocket science. Just follow the directions. Be realistic about what you can do and what you should do and follow the directions. If you're submitting a lot of auditions that are not appropriate, that's just making more work for your agent to have to sort through them, which is just adding to your agent's frustration, which is not going to put you in the good books. Here's one that I had never heard of before, but apparently this is starting to become a thing. Retracting auditions. You've got a handful of agents across the country, and it is not uncommon to see auditions, the same audition, from multiple agents. You submit to one of the agents, and then one of the other agents says, you should have submitted with us. So you go back to the original agent, and you ask to retract the submission so that you can submit for the other agent. Not cool. And by the way, that's your problem, not your agent's problem, and you shouldn't be making it your agent's problem. And your other agent shouldn't be asking you to retract auditions in the first place. That's not cool either. I honestly didn't know this was a thing, but apparently it's becoming a thing, and it's not a good thing. Next up on the list, not auditioning on the same day you receive your audition. A good amount of times clients are going to have the final choice on the first day that auditions are submitted. So if you get the audition at 10 o'clock in the morning, but it says that the deadline to submit is 6 o'clock the next afternoon, don't wait until 5.50 the next afternoon to submit. Get it sent in early, which should go without saying, but evidently it does need to be said. So the quicker you can get your audition in, the better. This next one is really interesting. Most of the time when I see auditions from my agents, not, not all the time, but most of the time, the rate's outlined in the audition. This particular agent said that they are tired of talent complaining about rates after they've booked the job. Generally speaking, you should know what the rate is before you even audition. Again, not always, but typically they're there if you actually read through all of the information, which I think is another part of the problem. A lot of voice actors aren't actually reading the information. They're just submitting the auditions and waiting to see what happens. But complaining about it after you've booked, not really cool and not really a good practice if you're hoping to book again down the road. Next tip, if you receive the same job from multiple agents, make sure that you check the submission deadlines carefully because different agents will close jobs at different times. So pay attention to what the deadlines are and make sure that you are submitting before the appropriate deadline for the appropriate agent. This one, like, honestly, I have to say, if somebody did this to me, they wouldn't be represented by me anymore. So kudos to this agent for patience and tolerance because I probably wouldn't have it. Don't tell me your audition was late because the guys were over last night for a sports game. So you got up late and that's why you were a bit late getting started and a bit late submitting. Like, honestly, if that's what you drop on me, I'm probably not going to represent you anymore. So the fact that this agent is even mentioning this and I guess willing to offer forgiveness if it does happen once, good for them. But seriously, get your crap together. Take your business seriously. Do not call an agent to ask how to become a voice artist. That's fair. There are so many resources that are out there already. Podcasts, YouTube channels, entire websites that have been set up that you can go through and find information on what you need to know and how to become a voice actor, coaches that will do consults with you, etc. You definitely should not be calling agents asking how to become a voice actor. It's not going to make the first impression that you think that it's going to make for down the road when you are actually ready to submit and try to get onto that agent's roster. You may have already blew your chance. Here's a good one. Don't send auditions labeled with another agent's name for submissions. First, it proves that you're submitting twice. Second, it's inappropriate. Yeah, that's not cool. Every one of my agents has different naming structures that they use, and, and I don't begin to question why they use their naming structures. That is not my job. My job is to just follow the naming structures. 
If you're screwing up the naming structures and submitting the wrong ones to the wrong agents, that's going to go a long way to making sure that your stuff isn't getting submitted to the ultimate end client. So this comes back to 101, follow the directions, pay attention to the details. And finally, don't ask your agent to decide which take sounds best. If you don't know, get a coach. And that is 100% fair. An agent's job is to collect auditions, submit auditions, negotiate contracts, try to get you work. An agent's job is not to coach you. Now, maybe there are some agents that do offer that as a service. Some of them may offer it for an additional fee. Some of them are qualified to do that and will do it for an additional fee. But on the whole, this is absolutely not something that you should be reaching out to your agent for. This is absolutely something that you should be reaching out to a coach for. So these are a list of things. Again, these are not from me. These are from an agent wanting to communicate to talent what some of the things are that you may or may not be doing, which could ultimately be harming your relationship with this agent and very likely with other agents as well. I think it all comes back to follow directions, pay attention to the details, be professional, right? Don't be a high maintenance drama queen. Don't be a high maintenance drama king. Like for crying out loud, this is your business. This is your profession. Some of this stuff, when I was reading it, I was like, are you kidding? For real, this is what is happening. This stuff is actually going on. And apparently it is, which is so not cool. So don't be that talent. Build a good working relationship with your agent. And I think ultimately it will become a mutually beneficial relationship. Thanks so much for listening. I'll catch you on the next one. And that's a wrap. Thanks for hanging in. Thanks for hanging out. Want more VOPreneur goodness? Jump online at VOPreneur.com.